It's nearly midnight on our clock of the Earth's history. 13,000 years ago, a disaster struck America. The mega mammals were wiped out, and the people who hunted them lost their main food source. The cause of this disaster has long been a mystery. But deep in these Ohio caves, archaeologist Ken Tankersley has discovered something which might provide the answer. This is a meter which measures the magnetism, the amount of iron, the higher the iron content, the greater the magnetic susceptibility of this layer. Uh, first put the probe in this gray area below the Clovis layer is a perfect spot and we check the magnetism we see that it has a magnetism of 8. Now what we're going to do is compare that with the layer above it. The reading is 50 times the iron content. In other words the magnetic susceptibility is 50 times higher than the area that's gray. A basic experiment reveals just how rich in iron the Clovis layer really is. A magnet dragged across the surface is left covered with iron particles. It's a simple test with an astonishing implication. It suggests this region was hit by an asteroid. This suggests that there was some type of catastrophic explosion, one which not only deposited meteoric iron, but one that was also intense in temperature and pressure. An asteroid strike meant North America's mega mammals were doomed. They couldn't adapt to the challenging conditions that followed the disaster. But humans could, and the survivors flourished. It's a controversial theory. But it wouldn't be the first time that death had come from space. Scientists believe that 65 million years ago, an asteroid wiped out the dinosaurs, leaving behind a giant crater. The trouble is, for the Clovis event, no crater exists. But one man has a theory which might explain why there isn't one. Planetary geologist Peter Schultz has come to this NASA research center in California to conduct an experiment with this giant gun. It's so powerful, it can fire projectiles at over 15 times the speed of sound. This is one of the big guns, the fastest gun in the West. This is where we have a chance to actually fire small bullets, small BBs at very high speed. Schultz and his team will be firing the gun to find out if an object from space could strike the Earth without leaving a crater. Schultz is testing a theory that glaciers could have protected the Earth's surface. During the Clovis era, much of North America was covered by a vast ice sheet up to a mile thick, a remnant of the last big freeze. Schultz hopes a scale experiment will show whether glaciers could have prevented an asteroid from leaving a crater in the underlying rock. The question we really want to address is, will the ice actually protect the Earth below? This is our projectile. It's just an eighth of an inch, about three millimeters or so. And we're going to be firing this at a speed of about five kilometers per second. The team prepares the gun for firing. A number of ultra-high-speed cameras will film the impact for later analysis. 
Inside the impact chamber, Schultz prepares the target. The red sand represents the surface of the earth. This adds some color, at least to the surface layer. And this way we can tell whether or not we punctured through the surface or not. So we have loose sand underneath and we have the red layer on top. We're going to do one experiment when we slam just into this target like we have it. And the other one where we put a thin layer of ice. And the idea behind that is whether or not this ice will act as a flat jacket. Now we just have to go hit it. Let's, let's see what happens. The gun is raised into the firing position. And the countdown begins. The team waits in a sealed bunker, well away from the gun itself. <laughs> now that, that did some damage. So this is big. So we gotta, we gotta slow this up now and take a look at the slow-mo. Kapow! So this is now the entire impact with the streak through and the impact Stuff that's going down range at extremely high speed. That clears away and we have the crater forming. And now the crater just grows and grows and grows and grows and keeps growing. High speed footage shows the devastating impact on the exposed sand surface. But the best evidence is inside the impact chamber itself. Sweet. Oh, that's nice. Now, now that did some damage. So this this impact was a was a good size impact. This was hyper velocity. It slammed in. It excavated stuff from below. If we scaled this up to a big crater on the Earth, it would last for millions of years. So the next stage is to repair this target, make it look like it was before we had the impact, but this time, let's put down a slab of ice, kind of resembling what might have been on the Earth when there were glaciers. Now we have the ice on top of the target, and what we want to know is whether or not this ice actually buffers or protects the underlying target from the impact. And we see that the vapor expands, and we're seeing a little bit of ice come out. And the ice clears away, and the real question, I'm really anxious to see, is whether or not we really produce a crater. Right now, I don't see a crater. Let's see what we did. Oh, oh man. Oh, that's remarkable. The ice was here. And it really protected the target underneath, and that's just simply loose sand. So with time, these pieces disappear, they melt away, and all we have is a, have is a tiny little crater. And if this were the Earth, it could be re easily eroded away. And so when that ice disappears, there's just nothing left. It's, it's the perfect crime. It's only a scale model, but it shows an ice sheet could have masked the evidence of a powerful impact 13,000 years ago. Maybe the mega mammals were wiped out by a cosmic catastrophe. One day, we may face a similar disaster. Advanced warning will be essential for our survival. something astronomers in Arizona are working to provide. This is Mount Lemmon Station, part of the Steward Observatory. Here, asteroid hunter Ed Beshaw combs space for near-Earth objects, NEOs. 
There are millions out there right now. And not surprisingly, governments worldwide consider them a real threat. Well, the Earth traveling around the sun is much like a, a race car traveling around a circular track. And a neo collision might be very much like a car coming suddenly out of the pits in front of the race cars, representing an immediate impact threat. And of course, the consequences of a collision would be devastating. Each night, Bishaw's team photographed the skies searching for anything that moves. Hey, Andrea, have a look at this. It's really fast. Yeah, it's quite bright. It's 19th magnitude, and it's got a digest score of 100. Let's check if it is known. Yeah. Okay, there's no ID on this. This object is new. The team have found an NEO. It's painstaking but vital work. We take four images over, spaced over about 45 minutes, about 10 minutes apart. So here you see four images being shown in sequence. Our computers register the images so that the stars don't move, but any object which is moving on the sky is revealed like you see the object here. Fortunately, this near-Earth object is probably harmless. This object is, in fact, what's called a virtual impactor, which means that there is a small, a very small probability that there might be an impact in the future. It's big, but luckily it poses little risk. But for every large object in space, there are many thousands of smaller ones, and they can pose a real threat. The asteroids are like gravel. If you pick up, up a handful of gravel, you're going to find that there's a few large objects in there, but there's a whole lot more smaller objects. And it may be these smaller objects that, in fact, might be on a collision course with the Earth. And you don't have to look far to see what even a small asteroid can do. This is Meteor Crater in Arizona. 50,000 years ago, this impact devastated hundreds of square miles. And the asteroid that did it was just 50 meters across. But if you think 50 meters is small, check this out. This is the aftermath of a large explosion in the remote Tunguska region of Siberia in 1908. Fallen trees fanned out from a central blast point for hundreds of miles. There could be only one cause, an asteroid exploding with the power of a nuclear bomb. And its estimated size? Just 10 metres across. Tunguska is the only hard evidence we have of a, of a recent impact on planet Earth. So we can look at that and say, that's pretty scary. If that was a city underneath there, it would be completely obliterated. And it's quite interesting that if you look at the area that was destroyed and superimpose it on London, for example, virtually the entire uh, area of Greater London would be wiped out. This catastrophe shows just how vulnerable we are. Tunguska-sized projectiles strike Earth roughly once a century. The last one, 